Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we are reviewing PNS Breakbuster. Welcome back to the channel guys. So today we are reviewing the PNS Brake Buster Wheel and Tire Cleaner. If you are new to the channel guys, we do lots of product reviews and detailing tips and how to, so please subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Um, right, what is this product first of all guys? So wheel cleaner, obviously, wheels and tires, cleans and brightens, intensive foaming action, safe on all wheels, non-acidic formula, so acids, things that you need to handle with care, you know, that, that also you don't perhaps want drying or you don't want to use them on sensitive kind of surfaces and stuff like that. So acids, you know, a lot more aggressive. So for the detailing scene where you're generally, generally looking after your cars um, better, cleaning them more regularly, then a non-acidic wheel cleaner is often the way to go. Um, let's read the product description. Brake Buster Total Wheel Cleaner is the perfect solution for cleaning both rims and tyres. Brake Buster safely removes accumulated brake dust, oil, dirt, stains and light corrosion from the premium quality wheels without damaging the delicate surface. Brake Buster is a unique cleaner that adheres to the wheel and the tyre surface to penetrate the dirt deposits, cleaning them away. Brake Buster prepares tyres for dressings and deposits a thin layer of special corrosion inhibitors to prevent the wheel from future corrosion. So like a lot of times when you use caustic materials, um, they can promote oxidisation and corrosion. So you can spray certain chemicals on brake discs or rotors as you crazy people in America like to call them um, and they will light up like a Christmas tree and go yellow or orange which is something you want to avoid so this has got corrosion inhibitors in there which I think is a nice thing to have really it's uh, something that's very very desirable directions always apply to a cool wheel surface obviously we're just going to dry these chemicals and bake them out um, spray a generous amount of brake buster total wheel cleaner to the rim and tire surface allow to sit for one minute or greater then scrub with a brush rinse with a pressure washer or high pressure hose okay guys next up positives and negatives first negative guys you can decant this product and you can lower it down like five to one or ten to one one of my patrons Tosh told me that it works that way and I've tested it that way and it seems to work quite effectively um, at five to one and even up to 10 to one, it's still degreasing. It still seems quite powerful. Um, they don't tell you that on the bottle. And I think that would be a very important thing that you could knock this down. Um, so they should get that on there that you could perhaps, you know, water it down a little bit to get better value for money from, from it. They might have it on a website or something, but they don't have it on the bottle. Um, next thing, if you do want to decant it, they're using, they're using, a kind of locking, <laughs> a locking nut on the trigger that I couldn't get off even with my Herculean strength. So I had to use a pair of pliers, you know, like grip molders or whatever they're called to get this off. And now, now I can do it. Um, probably a reason for that, but I think if there's a pro product which you might want to knock down, then having these locking kind of things might not be the best way. I mean, that's a pretty small thing, but I made a note of it. So we go through all of that sort of stuff. Here's another one, guys. Here's another one. On the surface of the front of the bottle, it says it's safe on all wheels. So that's quite clear language, isn't it? Safe on all wheels. And on the back, it has an, a note, a double-starred note. Important spot test on all wheel surfaces prior to application to avoid the risk of staining or damage. So that doesn't fit in line with the product claim of safe on all wheels, does it? Um, you know, risk to, to avoid risk of possible staining or damage. So that's a little bit, a little bit kind of worrying. I understand, I understand what they're doing. It's like a, it's like a sensible thing to say. It's always test your product first on whatever surface, because then it cover, kind of covers them. 
Um, but there was a little bit of contradiction there um, with, with the information, in my opinion. Um, another negative that this wheel cleaner, a potential negative is that this wheel cleaner is not a fallout remover. Um, doesn't claim to be, so it's not a bleeding fallout remover. It's not going to be as effective at bleeding fallout removers at removing embedded iron contamination. So there are a lot of guys that like to use wheel cleaners that are kind of fallout removers as well, periodically. If you're not getting that with this, that's fine because a lot of people also won't want that in their wheel cleaner and I would fall into that category that I don't want to be using it every wash. So a standard kind of alkaline wheel cleaner would be the way to go. Um, next negative that I noticed guys, it just took some fiddling to get the foam right in the IK foamer. It's quite a dry foam this and I prefer I prefer a wetter foam. So I played around with all the different nozzles, the green, I found the orange to be the optimum, which I think is like a wetter foam and putting more water in it seemed to help. It's a very dry, fluffy foam that it produces because of the high foaming nature of the product. And that give, gave me that scenario when I did a video where I talked about does foam help? It can create the scenario where you get the mousse sitting on there, you know, the foam clinging and then just dropping away from the, the wheel and leaving behind it dry dirt. Um, so you're not getting the soaking effect. So sometimes getting the foam a little bit wetter. Uh, I struggled, you know, I've spent about as much time as I want to spend playing around now with trying to get the foam wetter. Um, it's still decent enough, um, but perhaps even more water or some way of playing around with it to, to get a wetter foam would be good. Another negative with this product, guys, is that I have used this to clean four alloy wheels on my car. I've done a little bit of testing on the hood as well, but I've basically, to do four alloy wheels, I've used half a bottle of Brake Buster. Um, so two of the alloys I've done by spraying it on as instructed kind of neat, and two of them I've done it with the IK foam where you can decant it around one to five. When you put stuff in that IK foamer, you tend to blast through product quite rapidly. You know, you really hurl it onto the thing, but then you, you've sort of bulked it down a little bit. But then when you use it in the sprayer, you're perhaps using less product, but you're using it kind of neat. So you could water it down a little bit. But anyway, I've used half the product. So it's effectively cost around five pounds to clean four alloy wheels, which is quite a high cost. Those guys are the negatives. Now I want to move on to the positives. Yeah. Okay guys, on to the positives. You can see this, can you see this? I got lines like, I got lines like I've tie dyed my shirt, but it's sweat from playing tennis. I can barely move, I'm getting too old. Something's wrong, shouldn't be this unfit. Anyway, um, right, the positives. Number one, when you're using it, spraying it directly out of the bottle onto the wheel and then you make contact with the brush, it foams up really nicely under the brush. So it's a high foaming product, which I think generally people will like. Stick it in the IK foamer at five to one and it gives you a white fluffy foam. You know, very high foaming product. Uh, next positive, corrosion inhibition. I sprayed this all over the rotor just to see what it would do and uh, it didn't light up and I'm overlaying you the picture. So the corrosion inhibitors in the product works, which means you can just get it in that inside of your wheel without worrying about lighting your brake discs up, which is great. And I think that's a really, really important kind of positive. Next, the product to me, it's not caustic or aggressive in your hand. So some, some cleaners you might want to glove up because if you splatter stuff on your arm and hand and stuff, you'll get little burn marks if it's an acid and stuff. Um, you know, I didn't have any gloves on, I could spray this. I could even take this now and just spray it on the arm. You know, I wouldn't because it's quite strong, but um, it's kind of it's skin safe, if you like. So I kind of made a note of that as positives. Um, does a good job of cleaning the tire as well as the alloy. You can see that browning, that kind of, um, you know, that dirt, that transformation of the white foam to a kind of yellow brown thing. So it's breaking down whatever's on the surface. Um, 
And brake dust, it seems effective at softening brake dust. Most of the cleaning I was doing was using a very soft brush. So I'm trying to, by using a very soft brush, I'm letting the product do most of the work rather than the brush do most of the work. This is very, it won't get, you know, this detail factory brush has got to be the least aggressive brush out there, which is kind of good. So I'm cleaning my brush, I'm cleaning my alloys with mainly very soft, non-aggressive brushes. So I'm pre perhaps preserving the finish a little bit. And with the Brake Buster product, it did a pretty good job of cleaning it. I noticed the infamous rim on these 140s. I just needed to give it a little bit of a poke because when I rubbed my finger over it, even though it looked clean, there was still a bit of dirt there. And um, once the alloy dried, you'd see that. But when it's wet, it's harder to see. So I needed to just do one section again. But apart from that, the product did a really good job of cleaning those alloy wheels and they were dirty. And it was kind of not completely baked on and embedded, but it'd been, been on there for a couple of weeks. So as far as I'm concerned, it passed the test of being able to deliver me the sorts of results that I want on my 140 when I leave it as long as I'll ever leave it because I tend, it's rare for it to go that long without giving my wheels a wash. So good results. Um, another positive guys, I thought I would test this just as a little sanity check because it said that it's a kind of breaks down oil as well so it has a degrease effect, effect. I thought I'd just side by side test it on my dirt simulator which is basically grease and dirt mixed in and see if it could degrease as well as Surfex HD. Nothing tends to degrease as well as Surfex HD. It's really, really powerful. Um, first off, I tried Surfex HD at 10 to 1 versus Brake Buster. And Brake Buster performed great. And I thought, Jesus, it's just as strong as um, Surfex. But I didn't realise Surfex was down at 10 to 1. You know, so it's got an advantage. So then I put um, Brake Buster down at 10 to 1 and compared them. And if I had to say what was most powerful at 10 to 1, I'd give it to Surfex. It seemed to just have that edge that I could see when I'm spraying it onto the grease where it just kind of instantly lifts it. But this stuff is a really good degreaser and it had a similar rapid effect of degreasing as Surfex HD. And I, not, I very rarely see that from any other water-based degreasers. So this is quite powerful stuff, even at 10 to 1 and reasonably effective. So you would struggle to really see the difference between these two products. They are both very good degreasers, and that's good, because like I say, Surfex is one of the most powerful on the market. The price is decent. When stuff from the UK goes over to the US, you know, the price goes up, and it may have been fantastic value in the UK, then in the US it's, it's expensive. The same happens when US products come over to the, to the UK a lot of the time. So, Jeff from Prestige Car Care, who stocks all this stuff, has this problem with the other stuff that he, he stocks, Griot's, uh, Adams, uh, I think he stocks Masterson's uh, Car Care range, and some other stuff as well. Uh, I can't remember, I can't remember. But the thing with this is over in the US, this stuff is absolutely dirt cheap. So you could pick up this bottle for about six or seven dollars, so 16 ounce bottle or half a litre for the civilised world. <laughs> I'm only joking, don't kill me. Um, or I think about $20 for um, a US gallon, which is a phenomenal price. And when you factor in that you can dilute it down, I love that price. Now it's come over to the UK, it's £29 for a US gallon. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's kind of like you're detailing standard isn't it 25 to 30 quid although that could be for five liters you could argue but it's a decent price and i think like i was saying um some of the other american stuff that comes over the price is higher for a us gallon so i like the price on the product if it was as cheap as it was in the us over in the uk you know 20 dollars is what 15 quid 15 quid for a us gallon then this product i think might be knocking on the door of a five-star rating because it's just giving me good results for what it is. You know, there might be some scenarios with a non-acid wheel-based cleaner where it's not going to be able to clean as effectively as an acid when you've got that kind of rusted, you know, burnt-on brake dust that's starting to go orange and you've got to scrubbing at it. You know, this might not be the ideal product for that. 
But for a car that you're looking after and well maintaining, you know, maybe once a month or something, where it's not all kind of gone orange, it seems to be out of cope with that. Um, and the fact it doesn't light up your brake discs as well. It's a really good product. However, it's still not cheap, is it? It's just in the UK, it's just priced where it should be really. So in that, in that regard, I'm gonna give it four and a half out of five stars. And if it was dirt cheap, it may even have got a five star rating. I'm pretty impressed with this stuff, guys. There is not many things more that I want from a, from a wheel cleaner that this isn't giving me. Um, so I think PNS brake, PNS brake buster, my brain's shutting down, <laughs> is going to be a popular product. I know there's a lot of people that have used it and have, and have liked it, and it's one of the reasons I'm featuring it. I've heard some good things. Let me know your thoughts about the um, products in the comment. Let me know if, if this was a fair review, but I would definitely say you should check this stuff out, guys. Get, as always, maybe dip your toe by getting the small uh, 16 ounce bottle and if you like the product then you can go in and buy a big bulk of it but you get much be better value for money if you buy the US gallon and you could even experiment in watering it down a little bit you know one to three or one to five if you're maintaining your car washing it every one or two weeks and you're not going to really need to use it at full concentration in my opinion which is based on pretty limited experience of it. Overall, um, PNS brake, brake Buster, I can definitely recommend you try it, guys. I hope this was a useful fair review. Thank you very much for watching, and if you've not already done so, please subscribe to the Forensics Detailing channel, uh, and I will see you soon on the uh, next review. Bye now.